HiSec Buyback offers 90% GDA anywhere in HiSec. Simply go to HiSec.EveBuyback.com, appraise your items, create a contract, and get paid quickly. Welcome to Talking in Stations. It's a podcast about EVE Online. I am Matterall here with friends. We're going to talk about compression. Again, this time we have a lot of meat to put on the bones. In other words, details came out from CCP, the makers of EVE Online, talking about what the new compression looks like. So we're going to take a look at it. We've been testing it, and people here are very familiar with it. So. We'll start there and we'll talk about uh, a little battle that just happened along with the week's news for New Eden. Okay, introductions here. Let's start with Kenneth. How are you doing, Kenneth? Good morning. How's everybody doing? He's CSM 16 member and heavy duty industry knowledge. Next to him is Sutonia, also a CSM 16 member. Hey, everyone. He specializes in, wow, just about everything. He's a living encyclopedia of EVE knowledge. Also from our staff is Shen. How are you doing? Hello, hello. And our guest today is known to everyone as Dunk Dinkle. How are you doing, Dunk? He's a leader of Brave. Good morning, everyone. I'm in my riding kit, so I'm going to leave in a few minutes to go on my bike ride. So I'll, I'll try and fit in my points early. All right, we'll get you in early. That's, that's your mining, your mining, that's your uh, riding outfit? Yeah, it's just a standard cycling jersey. Oh. Boarding. All right, Dunk, uh, you wrote a blog that we're going to take a look at. Uh, some good uh, reading there to be done. Okay, let's start with, uh, we're just going to open it up to, to all of you guys. Probably Kenneth will take the lead on this one, but tell us about compression now that we know what's in it. A few things. One, depending on the ship, first of all, the porpoise did get compression. I know that was a, a lot of people were wondering about that, but it can only do asteroid ore, which is everything but mercoxic. And we're going to talk about that more later. And also gas. There's a very small contingent of wormhole C1 and C13. I think that's how you say it. Uh, frig shattered wormholes that are upset that. It didn't get ice compression. So for those three people out there, I'm sorry. But the major thing was gas compression, and it, and it did get that. The bonuses or boosts are also buffed slightly. I had said some things online I want to make sure that I'm clear on. The porpoise got orchid. So that means all of the bonuses to mining for itself, meaning its drones, got pushed onto the core just like the Orca did. But all of the boosts are the same pre-patch as post-patch. So that's the same. But when you run the core, you get an extra jump on top of that. They also applied the industrial command ship bonus to it too. So the, the Porpoise got a, a pretty healthy bump in, in boosts along the way if you run the core. But then you have the Orca and the Rorqual. They're pretty much the same, except for the Rorqual is the only one that can... Oh, I'm sorry. 
which one can't the orca do? Well, the orca can't do one of them, I think. But anyway. Uh, the orca can do all of them now, right? You can do all of them, I think. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Confusing between V1 and V2. Anyway, uh, when they're running the module, though, anyone in fleet, and the way the module's worked out, if the booster has max skills, if you can receive boosts from that ship, then you can also compress. So hulks, coveters, retrievers, all of that can compress now themselves. And hulks were already really tight on jet can space. And with the jet can doubling and the ability to compress, that opened up a, a world for hulks that they've never seen before. So they won't have to stop or be in any type of danger of running out of space with that fix for sure. What do you guys think? Let's start with Dunk. Your thoughts on the compression part of the changes that are coming? Well, I, I wrote up, I did a bunch of testing on the test server. I'm, I'm a big believer in seeing it for myself rather than just reading the interwebs. So I spent time on the test server doing a bunch of stuff and jumping between systems to get all the pieces and stuff. And my TLDR is, in general, the new compression mechanic is good. It's a welcome change. It is a little different than compression we've had in the past. There is some weirdness to it. I don't understand the specialness of mercoxic, but there's, I'm sure, some reason for that. Their change that's going to break some spreadsheets is the ratio used to be you had 100 of an item and it became one compressed item. Now it's one to one. So 100 Veldspar becomes 100 compressed Veldspar. So the math is going to break some spreadsheets and the way people calculate things for a little bit, but that'll be sorted out. The UI is still pretty buggy. In some places, it's pretty alpha. I put some animated GIFs up on my uh, blog post to show you what I'm talking about. Some more work before release to make it up to the level we have already with or reprocessing. In general, I think it's good. A controversial thing I put in my um, post is uh, if getting Rorquals out of mothballs is a true objective of CCP to get those things in, in space and vulnerable to things, I recommend that you let them dock at Athenor. Athenors are by far the most dominant mining thing out there for the moons, not Tataras. So if you start to let uh, Rorquals dock there, you're going to have them become used a lot more. And once they're in space and being useful in any way, they have to have the Indy core engage, which means they're completely vulnerable for five minutes. So that'll be probably the most controversial thing about what I wrote up about this. But in general, it was really good to see CCP look at all the feedback from version one of compression, come up with a different concept, and move forward. Little tweaks are going to make it really great. Right now, when you have a command burst, you see that effect is on your ship. As it stands now in the testing, the compressor, when activated, you don't know that it's been activated by someone in your fleet. So it'd be great if there was a symbol like the command bursts for the compressor enablement so you knew you could compress at that time. That'd be super helpful. But in general, it's good. I don't think there's going to be a ton of complaints about it. There'll be minor things people don't like, but in general, it's a great step forward as long as they're willing to to tweak it as they see how it gets used over the next several months. Yeah, the one thing I just want, the moon compression ratio is 100 to 1, which means if you have an, an average moon that is uh, for a month-long pull, that's say 30 million cubic meters total, that's going to compress down to 300,000 and will fit in a single rock wall once it's all compressed. Compression helps, but I think also you know, not everyone is just solo mining with a Rorqual. I think at least in smaller groups, you may have locust fleets go out or small mining gangs go out in which they're going to haul that ore back by themselves. So it's now much more feasible that you could mine for a couple hours, store all that compressed ore in your ship and fly it back to your, your staging system. So I think it's... Um, not just a boost to Rorquals, this compression is going to mean that procurers and ventures have more ability to carry back with him on, a, on even a solo mining trip than previous. But the other part of that is those procurers carrying all that will be quite expensive if they explode. 
if they have moon ore in there compressed at 100 to 1, especially if they're doing 32 or 64, they, that will be quite a tasty yeah, kill abs- Yeah, a- absolutely. But I think this goes to CCP's idea about risk and reward. If you want to have an easier logistics, you're going to take on a little additional risk, just like the gas compression. You don't have to compress your gas to use it. But if you decide to compress it, you're going to take a little loss to get the easier transfer. So I think it goes in mind with they're creating a situation where the players have choice. They're not forced into one thing or the other. If they take the choice to make logistics easier, they're increasing their possible loss, which I think is the direction they're wanting to head to make player choice be be key to what this is. Oh, I meant that as a good thing for sure. I, I didn't mean it to to make it sound negative. That's That's a... A very good thing because people will be risking more, but you'll be able to move large amounts of moon goo that way. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's it's overall it's a great win, but I think I have the average player in mind who's probably not uh, sitting on a bunch of Rorquals. They're sitting on some procurers, maybe some coveters, and they are going to find this helpful to them as well. It's not just helpful for the top tier high skill point players, pretty much everyone in the game who's in a group that can organize some sort of compressor boosts is going to benefit from that. Shen, you were somebody that was heavy into industry, oh, about a year ago when we first met. And I'm wondering, you were very dissatisfied with the direction of shortages and that sort of stuff, the mining becoming more scarce and less, I don't want to say less profitable, but just less frequent. What do you feel about the compression changes? Have you looked into them? Yeah, I feel like mostly in in this patch is really good. I think the direction they're going is at least making life much easier (laughs) for a lot of miners, uh, especially, for example, moon mining with the raw coal hot drop, where you can, let's say, if you undock from the 40s are, there's a wide variety of range of Athenors, of moons that you can jump to, and then go from there. And at the, at the end of the day, when you're done, you can just jump back altogether. Uh, what it used to be is like you put the uh, exhumers in inside the Roku and you have to take a shuttle all the way to that system. I think once you can do it all together, it saves a lot of time and a lot of like wasted energy, I would say. And one thing I, I think I really like is the decompression of gas instead of compression of gas where you have the option of compress it first, and that's with no loss. But then you can find an Athenor, let's say your Alliance owns, and it can be only one of them. And then you can go to that station and then decompress it. Instead of going, let's say, for the a lot of the moon ore beforehand, where compressing them is without this patch, would be just refining them. And refine them in, let's say, an Athenor is not most efficient. And, and that's what I don't like. And then what's the most, let's say, the most efficient way of doing it is go to a, a Tatara, but that's not always available. And I think when it comes to gas this time, it's a different way where you're compressing it with no loss, but you're decompressing it in a central station and you can get the most out of it. Use cases, Nick, you're different. You're more of a high sec miner. Truthfully, digging it. The potential, like in my case, it's an orca sitting out there and it's already not moving because it's supporting the fleet. So if I have to pop an extra module on to let everybody compress and not have to toss in every two cycles from the Hulk into the orca, this is going to put us on the field a lot longer. And that's not a bad thing at all. Oh, that's interesting. And high sec. Maybe it's a little safer to be out in space mining and compressing, staying out on the field instead of, I don't know, moving around. As long as you're not stupid. Okay, let me take that back. As long as you're still careful and watching your system and not taking, it's a calculated risk. Now, granted, in high sec, the risks are considerably less. So I'm looking forward to it. I've got a couple of folks who are already plotting our first uh, trial runs with it when it comes live. The one thing though, the compressor modules cheap fitting wise either. You may have to make uh, a few extra sacrifices that you weren't used to making before. So Tony, what do you think of the compression changes in general? Are you familiar? Yeah, I'm not 
as big on mining and industry as like Dunk and Kenneth are, like, and even Nick probably. But uh, I'm super excited for them based on what I used to do. I used to go into wormholes and just mine gas casually, uh, especially once they uh, did the industry changes, just to check it out. And I'm really excited for the Poipus getting the medium industrial core because being able to go into wormholes and compress gas, because that used to be like a huge pain. It was like getting not only, uh, you used to be only be really realistically be able to like shallow wormholes. So I'd go in from low sec. And if there was like gas sites in the one wormhole that you had in that, that wormhole system, you just mine it there and then take it back out to null sec again. But if you can compress it inside the Poipus, as far as I'm aware, the ore isn't changing the ore hold on it. I think it can carry like 60,000 meters cubed. So now you can effectively carry uh, 600,000 meters cubed because I think gas is 10 to 1, right, Kenneth? Correct. Yeah, so you can definitely do a, a bigger expedition into wormhole space now, which I'm pretty excited for, or into the uh, gas mining constellations. And one thing that I would be, would I would find really fun would be to like maybe use like needle jack filament or like ferro or something and try to get into one of those gas mining constellations and mine some gas and then ninja back out into Potrin or something. That that. That seems pretty exciting to me. You can't do that anymore, I thought, with the... Uh... Yeah, you can't do it from wormhole space to uh, to Potrin, but you can do it from K-space to Potrin. What I meant then that's was good. like going to like the gas mining constellations in Nosek, because no, there's eight no, no. regions in Nosek that's associated with one like gas type each, and uh, they have a constellation where there's like, a much higher chance of it spawning there, but, like significantly higher chance. That they're called like the gas mining constellations. I believe there's one in like Cloud Ring, there's one in uh, Fountain, there's I think Tino. Yeah, the Silent has one. Yeah, yeah. All, all of the places that catch, like in the old uh, Brave staging, actually, Dunk used to be right in G Tag. That's uh, part of the gas mining constellation in in a catch. Used to get the good old uh, the Sanchez Nation or expanded that yeah, Lime, Lime Cytotos. And... All right, I've got to go to my bike ride. You all have a great day. Uh, Thank get you, out, Don. undock, have fun. Thank you. Take care, Donk. Thanks for coming, Donk. All right. Yeah, now that these are the gases. The ones <laughs> he's talking about are the gases that used to make the boosters. Yeah. Oh, I see. The uh, the, I mean, the drug drain gases. I think they still make boosters, right? They just have yeah. actual yes, use right now. Correct. But now you need to combine like two of those types, like the uh, Galanti ones, like Fountain and Cloud Ring, they get combined into something that's used to make uh, faction Galanti ships and all of the pirate ships that have Galanti as part of their like skill tree. Tony, I was thinking you were still talking about wormholes and filamenting out. Which... Oh, no, that, that that's cool, man. Uh, <laughs> other people might be confused about that too, so. So you're going to do some ninja mining or maybe some hunting opportunities coming out of this. What about the hunter aspect of it? People out there in space mining more often. Do you think there will be more, oh, kill males for barges? More probably not. The, the more aspect, I don't see that many more out there. The same amount will probably be there longer. But the chance of you getting something juicy because they have 10 or 100 times more materials in them is definitely something that's on the table. The one criticism I've heard is that miners will be out there longer, but they're going to have to pay attention more. Is that true because of compression? I'm going to say yes, because if you look at, if say you're mining with the Hulk, it doesn't matter that you can compress. It's still two cycles and you've filled your mining, your ore hold. So you got to compress every two cycles as opposed to shuffling it off somewhere else. So you still got to be out there paying attention, even though you're out longer. And a Hulk still has to offload to something because if you compress, then that's still in your mining hold. You'll get to a point where you can't do two cycles anymore. So you've got to either jet can it or put it in an Orca. It has to go. You can toss it into your, your regular cargo hold, but that's going to fill up fast once it's compressed. Because that, I think, is, what, only 600? But I'm not, I may be off on that. Yeah, I, I think a lot more people are going to be doing, you drop an MTU at the center of the belt or something, and then you like jettison it with your Hulk, especially now that you have the double jet can size as well, which is going to be pretty nice. And like with the compressed value, right, an MTU can effectively hold like 2.7 million <laughs> Because the MTU holds twenty seven k too, right? On the on the 
hunting aspect, I feel like maybe there's going to be like more orcas and poipuses that you're going to catch because previously they didn't have the well, the orca has the core now, but I don't think the risk of using it right now is maybe not. It's not as useful as it could be after this patch. So I think there'll be a lot more uh, poipuses and orcas who are willing to siege and willing to use the compression module where they'll be uh, more vulnerable as opposed to now where poipus and orca, if they're paying attention, they can normally get out before anyone can come in. Because with the orca, you can like use a 500 mm NWD and it, like warp out in under 10 seconds. And the poipus has like a six second line anyway. So they're pretty hard to catch generally if they're like actually paying attention. But now if they're stuck on grid, I think the Orca Siege is two and a half minutes. The Poipus one is also going to be two and a half minutes, or if it's going to be less. But that's a lot more time that those specific ships are going to be vulnerable. Uh, it says it's 1.25 minutes. Yeah, oh, okay. It's, 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 it's half. They halved each one. Yeah, that makes sense. So the uh, Poipus is on grid for uh, 70 seconds or something. But the Porpoise aligns and warps out like a cruiser too, so it's pretty yeah. quick. Now, Kenneth, earlier on, you had mentioned kind of off the cuff, fitting requirements are going to be fairly tough on this compression module. So if you're in an Orca, say today, and you're running a Indie Core, now I want to compress my Moon Ore, that's going to be a second module, also a high slot. Now there's some fitting questions start coming in pretty hard. You're going to have to lose your tractor beam, most likely. I assume that you have an Indy core, a couple of boost modules, and a tractor beam. So, yeah, not only is the fitting CPU and power grid going to be an issue, but you're going to have to make some life choices. Then it also means that like it's meant for, let's say, one compression module on the, at the time, or is it meant for, let's say, multiple of them? You can fit multiple of them. It's just going to gimp your fit more, right? Like uh, you're going to have to fit like maybe upgrades in the low slots, which is going to take away from your tank or your damage in an orca. Can you lose like damage control, bulkheads, or like maybe eye stabs or items like that during damage amplifiers? And realistically, there's not too many cases that I'm going to run into where I'm going to need to compress more than one class at a time. The major use case for that is going to be null sec anomalies where there's asteroid ore and mercoxid. So they'll fit both of those, but the Rurkle has eight high slots and shouldn't cause nearly an issue for the Rurkle as it does for the other ones. That kind of leads to my next question. You had mentioned earlier on, and Dunk had it written up in uh, his, there's some oddity with the mercoxic and compression. What's going on with that? It's just they consider it its own class. And Dunk doesn't like that. He thinks it should just be rolled into asteroid ore. Uh, I'm of two minds on it because I was an old school Mercoxit miner because I did T2 from way back when it first started. So I understand why they did it. What back in 2005, six, whenever they added T2. So I kind of like it being separate, but I'm also not going to die on that hill if they roll it in either. It's kind of like the Rorqual docking in the Athenor. I understand why they did it back in 2017, whenever, but I wouldn't die on that hill if they said, hey, we're going to allow them to dock in Athenors either. Yeah, I see that because realistically, how much bigger is a Rourke than a freighter, which docks in them all the time? Yeah, but if you start getting a slippery slope there. Well, if Rorquals can dock, why can't Dreads dock? It's because that's... Freighters and jump freighters are still tweeners. You don't need the capital ship skill for them, but you do need the capital ship skill for a Rorqual. And then if they can dock in an Athenor, why can't they dock in an Astra House? Why can't I dock my Dread in an Astra House? It's just, you start going down that slope. I think it probably incentivizes groups to pr put out bigger, more expensive structures to get the benefits of that. Correct. Yeah, sure. And one one thing from one thing from chat here, I want to a CCP Swift answered it, but when on Sissy right now it's goofy because I assume it's just Sissy. I have not asked, so I don't know for sure. But when the patch actually does happen, there won't be any compressed ore from today. All that is being completely deprecated. The new 
compressed ores have different type IDs. There are different things in the database. Selling it before, selling it after should be exactly the same, other than if you have it on the market, it will probably come off the market and you'll have to relist it. But the new compression is just one for one. So whatever you got for a hundred of uncompressed ore, you get for a hundred compressed ore. It's the same. So there won't be any mix match numbers other than ice isn't changing because it's one to one. It was already that way anyway. So just the way that works was different from the get go. But now if you had five units of, of compressed Veldspar pre-patch on patch day, when you log back in, you would have 500 units, but it would refine for the same amount. I have a question back to the fitting thing. Is it possible to, let's say, do a refit while in the core mode or not? The core does not give you any timer other than it breaks tether. So you can still refit as far as I know, but if you run boosts, then the boosts give you a timer. Just if you were in a claymore or, or a boosting ship in a fleet, you can't jump gate, uh, you can't tether, uh, all that kind of stuff goes along with being the booster workle. Yeah, I was thinking, let's say I can put down mobile depot beside a worker, and then whenever, let's say, a suicide gank comes, I can uh, swap my fit to a, let's say, more tanky fit that maybe don't have the uh, compression module on. All right, I like to deal with the big takeaways, normally uh, the, the sweeping impressions. And so where do you put this reality of compression compared to what we thought was going to happen, say even last week or all the way back to December? Do you think players like these changes? I've only heard one negative feedback, and that was from a guy that you could basically he could log in and shows up with 10 billion isk worth of compressed ore in his item hanger and he would still be mad about something. So short of that, I, I think it's very positive. I think the fleet compression took a lot of people by surprise. They leaked it a little bit early with the skill books being part of Guardians Gala. So people saw the skill book descriptions on hobo leaks and it took them about 14 nanoseconds to figure that shit out. So they knew hey, it was coming. Were you saying they were running out of Reynolds wrap tinfoil about that? Yeah, because the, the tinfoil thing on that is a lot of people thought that everyone in the fleet would have to have the skill book. and But they were running rampant. They had figured it out, but I couldn't tell them, hey, you figured it out. They just, yeah, they, were, yeah they were off the deep end on some things. But at the end of the day, this is the compression that everybody wanted. This is the compression that everybody expected. And on top of that, it was the fleet compression is something no one had really even thought about. And there's no one that I know that is upset with that. The jet can thing, toot toot, that was 100% me pushing for it. Now the rest of the CSM did jump on and also help push for it. And that's one of the reasons that got pushed through. And I'm pretty happy that got done. Uh, ex explain that a little bit. The jet can used to come out at- Yeah, 27,500 27, cubic meters. Now it's gonna now, be 55,000 cubic meters. The problem was, if you do the math, it can only jet cam one every three minutes. So that works out to 153, meters cubed per second, and you would basically fill it up. While a Hulk maxed out with ready to go is about 143 cubic meters per second. So you were almost up on the limit with a Hulk maxed out of running out of jet can. So you only had about an eight to 20 second window there to re-jet can and not turn off your lasers. And if you were a little bit late on one, you didn't get that time back. That would be, say you mine for an hour, you had that window, which kept lowering and lowering until basically you ran out and it would turn your lasers off. You'd have to wait a little bit, then jet can, and then you could start mining again. Anyway, they doubled it now. 
and it should alleviate any of that along with the compression from the fleet, now it really shouldn't be an issue. This kind of gets complicated because a jet can is basically anything you eject from your cargo. And it's an instant space of 55,000 cubic meters. And it used to be that miners would put down more permanent storage out there in order to put their mining products in it. And then somebody else could just haul it and stuff like that. So was this really necessary in order to improve them and facilitate the mining that was growing inside? As far as the jet can thing, that's some of it. The other things, the industrial ships over time have gotten bigger and bigger. And so the 27.5 was just an arbitrarily number picked back in 2003. And we yeah. just updated it for the times. By the way, and, that jet can story uh, has been something that Hilmar talked about as he was one of the original programmers of EVE Online. It was just some little code, and he just put that number out of the sky for the cargo space of it. And it was just something that he was doing while he was programming. But then it stuck, and people started using it in interesting ways. What I find interesting about doubling the jet can to 55, hey, I got no problem with that. It makes my life a little easier. But I can't remember the last time I jet canned mine, because everybody's usually sitting close enough to the, uh, the booster to just toss into the fleet hangar. Now, with the extended ranges that we're getting now, I can actually see some use cases where I'm going to start doing that to be able to compress, get enough, then toss it out and have somebody else tractor it in and carry it. So I may have to do this again. That's the difference between high sec and low sec and null sec too. Null sec, you'd never be close enough to your booster, most likely, unless you're ninja mining. I don't know what else there is to say about the compression thing. I just wanted to get an idea if people were happy about it. it sounds like they are. I actually uh, haven't heard a lot of complaints. Few. The, the, well, the other one complaint is the 100 to 1 asteroid orc. So that means Veldspar, Scordite, and I think it's Pyro. Three of them get smaller. Mercoxit gets like a billion times bigger, like 300 or 30,000 times bigger or something like that. And all the stuff in the middle kind of gets a little bit bigger now. But the amount of ore that you're using goes down quite a bit because of the industry changes, especially if you're building capitals. The amount of ore that you use to build capitals is much less. And it, it is what it is. It's probably the only negative with this patch, but it's also much easier to understand because you know how much the ore is and it's just a hundred to one. It was a good number. Even with the slightly negative drawback, I still think it's a very good change and will make it much easier for people to understand in the future because the old compressed versus uncompressed, it was a nightmare. You needed spreadsheets just to keep track of your volume, much less everything else. Now, the amount of ore that you have before and after compression is exactly the same, and the, the volume just goes down by 100. Uh, anyone can figure that out in a matter of seconds. It's a much better change, even if there is a very tiny negative part of it. One, one thing I really like about this dispatch is they didn't change anything that was here before. They add a lot of new things onto it. So it didn't took away like other people's play style or change their play style. They just add in more things so people have more options instead of taking away and changing the options. Good point. What you're doing today, you can do tomorrow. And this change won't affect a, a play style that doesn't bother or even care about compression. One thing for what Suetonia was talking about earlier, and, and I pushed for this hard, the porpoise in gas mining, I don't know if you know this, but the porpoise ore hold or mining hold is 50,000 cubic meters. It's the same exact size as the fleet hanger on a DST. And it has the same bonus. It's 5% per level of industrial command ship versus transport ships. So at level five, they're both 62,500. So if you skip into a wormhole, mine some gas, and you can send a DST in, and your DST, if you have the same level of skills, 
will be able to hold all your compressed ore out of that porpoise, can go back out of the wormhole, and then you can continue mining in there and just use a DST as your transport vessel. And a DST is a pretty slippery ship to catch, and it has a decent tank as well. It's a deep space transport. Correct. Yeah, it's going to be, it's nice that you can now jettison more now, right? <laughs> because before the fleet hangar was like 5,000 or something on the Poipers. The fleet hangar is, going to, is staying at 5,000, but... That yeah, so it's a bit yeah. of a pain to like... Uh, I guess you can do it from the Poipers side of things. I'm just, I'm thinking of multiboxing. So like if you were like tabbed into the DST client, you, you would you wouldn't be able to take it, but from the Poipus client, you'd be able to just drag it into the fleet hangar, right? So. Yeah, because you can drop straight into a shared fleet hangar from the from your ore hole. The fleet hangar on the Porpoise is small, but the fleet hangar on the DST and the mining hold on the Porpoise are the same size. Just make sure I clarify that. So real quick around the table, in a few thoughts, what's what's the takeaway from these compression changes? What's the behavior changes we're going to see? What are we going to see out there? One thing we didn't talk about was gas decompression. And the I think you get 95% with a Tatara, like 89% with an Athenor. So if you refine it a Tatara, it's going to very be a very minimal loss. So I think most people in wormholes for just like Suetonia said, at a 10 to 1 compression, gas will get compressed, period, nonstop for wormholes. Low sec or, and the null sec ones, I'm not sure, probably 50, 50, 90. As far as moon compression on an orca, I think high sec will be compressing like a mad because they can take that stuff to Jita and sell it to the null sec guys pretty easily. I really hope CCP pushes the changes to the blueprints for dreads and the capitals, whatever that they've promised they're going to do there to reduce the pricing. I really hope that comes on quick because now I think the supply side of it is fixed and we can move on to getting to the point where we can start building caps again in mass. Uh, I have a question, Kenneth. There's a skill, right? The gas decompression skill that increases the efficiency of gas decompression. Is that 95% on the Tatara, including that skill at level five? Yeah, it's 90% without the skill. And then I guess 91 is the minimum because you got to have the skill to do the decompression. And then 95% uh, is maxed out. Okay, cool. Anybody else have a thoughts on what how this is going to change things? About the only thing I'd want to bring up is we'd hit on it briefly before is the for folks like me the high sec flavor the fitting changes and decisions your mining foreman for lack of a better term needs to be on the ball and getting a good one and fleeting up with a good one is going to be worth your time i would just say that the price for those skill books is not exactly cheap for the uh, sh shipboard compression technology and the capital ones are 150 million each and the gas decompression one is like 75 million too so i, I don't think everyone is able to get that but like say maybe just let's say uh, some members in the mining fleet <laughs> well, right maybe you should start farming some guardian galacytes and get those all research fragments so you can get them from outer ring for, ch for cheaper <laughs> Yeah, only the booster needs those skill books, though. So, oh, okay. So that's the thing I think we should clarify. So, is so those skill books are there for using or to fitting the modules, not to use the compression module, right? Yes, that's what Matterall and I were talking about with the tinfoil when people just saw them on Hobo Leaks. So all those skills that were added, the only people that need those skills are the person running the, the Rorqual, the Porpoise, or the Orca. That's it, other than the decompression. Now the gas decompression, whoever your reprocessing pilot is, will need that skill. But if someone joins a fleet in a hulk and there's a compression module running, they can compress with the same exact skills they had pre-patch as they have post-patch. They need no additional skills to compress in a hulk. 
I can't wait to do this. <laughs> question from Shield Komodo in the audience. Will we see Orca prices increase more? I, if anything, I'd say they they might come down a tad uh, with our ability to compress and move some of these uh, items a little easier, especially the some of the moon components that are needed to build some of the newer components. Yeah, I think there'll probably be like an initial spike, right? Like I think once this ch changes uh, live, a lot more people are probably going to want an orca in there uh, for their Athenors, especially in high sec, where maybe they were getting by of just using a Poipus before. So there'll probably be like, I think, an, an initial spike on orcas as people want to get in on it to compress uh, ice or compress the moon ore. But then I think, as Nick says, it's probably going to go down after that to just under where we are now, would be my uh, assumption. There'll be a lag between the initial demand going up for these ships and the additional supply that kicks in after they get built easier and less expensive. That makes sense. Any last thoughts on uh, compression, these mining changes? They're great changes. I'm really happy about them. I'm not like a big industry guy. For me, it's just a pleb who does stuff occasionally with industry. I don't really see any flaws in it, aside from the few minor drawbacks that Kenneth has mentioned already. They are minor. They are minor. Or is there still some sanding to do on the edges here, Kenneth? Or is this in, in good shape already on the test? This is the sanded edges. You already did all that. It's, I mean, everything pre-patch, if you could do it pre-patch, you can do it post-patch. Not a freaking thing has changed. That was the big deal. Everyone wanted to click, get your bacon. That's still there. Now, just the whole fleet can right-click, get bacon. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and the amount of bacon available to be had is also increased for everybody. High sec can moon compress. Porpoise can gas compress. Workwell can compress everything. Orca can compress everything. If you don't like this, go play Warcraft. I, I can't see the little bit of extra volume for some of the in the or the ore in the middle. Sorry, you don't you need as much of it now anyway. If that's your biggest gripe out of this, you probably need to find a different game. That's a lot of bacon. You guys are going to overconsume. One thing that I noticed, and then we'll move on to something else, was it seemed like initially the compression was working like ammo, and now it seems to be working like boosting. So did they change what system it was going to use underneath? Yeah, I can't get into that too much because I don't know. I didn't really ask. But yeah, it's definitely compression now, fleet compression acts just like boost and it has the same exact range at max skills. And I've talked to, God, what's the CCP name? Par Paradox? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Paradox. Yeah. About getting a little symbol like Dunk talked about and that would be super nice. May not make it in the first patch. I, I may have to bug the crap out of him for a couple months, but hopefully it'll get there. Well, make sure you yeah. bug him before you're still in term. We've seen this before where when they were going to make a change on freighters, they were going to do it in the rig area. And they ended up changing their mind and moving it to low slots. You can move faster in a freighter, or you can carry more in a freighter, or you can be tankier in a freighter, uh, or a combination of the three. So it's interesting to see what mechanic they use in order to develop the concept and it, what's interesting about it is you can see that they can use more than one mechanic structure in order to build the concept out. Do you remember the uh, small tractor beam, uh, Ginger Magician Rage <laughs> thing? It, it, I don't remember that. Oh, that was a guy called... So in the in a patch, I think CSP originally set the mobile tractor unit BPO like a little too low. Mm. And uh, they were going to update it to 15 million ISK for the BPO, which would be 10 times the cost to build the module. And so this guy bought like a thousand of them or something, a thousand of these BPOs, and then CCP just reverted it. <laughs> and, he, and it was only 40 mil, but I guess at the time that was probably like, you know, maybe worth half a billion in today's money. Oh, that so, poor guy. They gave him his money back. 
I, I don't know if they gave his money back. I don't think they oh, did. That would suck. Well, I told people. Oh, in, it's his fault, right? That's the thing. If you're speculating on early changes and you get out in front of something and it changes behind you, you're out on a limb. That happened to me. I bought a bunch of wreckage to turn it into rigs for freighters. I bought everybody out. I bought everything because I knew that was going to be eternal. That's like rice or beans. This is something that was going to be used by people over a long period of time. And then they said, no, we'll move it over to slow slots. And so I was left with all this salvage that couldn't do anything with, or I I think I still have it. But yeah, it happens. If you get out in front of something and it changes behind you, you're out on a limb. Uh, You need to be in US Congress to get the good changes, right? Before they happen. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Let's move on to something that's like super interesting, a little surprising, but very welcome, it looks like, and that is the battleship changes that have hit. They've been announced. Tell us what they look like, Suetonia. Sure. So uh, there's two main changes here. I guess one of them is a little more minor. So the first change is uh, micro jump drives are just having their fitting costs reduced quite a bit. Uh, so they'll be easier to fit. The idea here is you just give battleships a bit more mobility especially with uh, like fleet fits as well. It'd be easier to strap one on so they can you know get out of bad situations because right now obviously the biggest penalty of using battleships is getting waterboarded and stuck in a place and just killed. So maybe that will help out a little. The second change, and this is like probably the biggest change, of course, is uh, all battleships are getting a roll bonus, or all battleships with the exception to the Praxis because that's special and also we're uh, a little worried about it at least small gangs are going to be happy about that but they're getting a roll bonus that increases the armor hp they get from armor plates by 50 percent and a bonus that gives them a hundred percent benefit to shield extenders that are fitted to them so essentially if you have a raven for example and you fit a large shield extender to it that shield extender counts as if you had two large shield extenders fitted and for for armor it'd be one to one and a half so a big hp buff and it's going to increase the ehp of battleships quite a lot the net result uh, gameplay wise what are they trying to do here oh they're trying to make battleships more powerful i know when they did the industry changes right the battleships were the anchor point so they kept battleships roughly about the same isk as before, but they feel like a lot of people feel like battleships are a bit too expensive, but CCP feel like they want to keep that anchor point there, and but they're going to compensate battleships by making them more powerful because a lot more people want to fly battleships, so try and push them into the meta a lot more. Not only just more powerful, but more survivable, and that I think was what a lot of this addresses. Yeah, especially in uh, combination with the uh, partial surgical strike rollback as well which is going to increase uh, resistance modules to be stronger than what they what they are now i think they're increasing by about 12.5 percent because they were nerfed by 20 percent so the math is a little funky right because you have to buff them by 12.5 percent to get it back to the original minus 20 percent or if they minus 10 percent the other thing is the battleship prices are pretty close to where they used to be pre dev blog I'm not saying they're exactly there, but they're pretty daggum close. You're talking about the production dev blog that happened last April. April. Yeah. They've gone back up now because of the speculators oh, for yeah, this change. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah, I also forgot to mention the. Uh, there's also a uh, buff that I think Cspiro added a little later, which is the sh- bulkhead buff that increases it mm. by like an addictive 5%. So if you fit a tech 2 bulkhead, it goes from 25% to 30%. If you fit a tech 1 bulkhead, I think it goes from 15% to 20%. Or you- I don't know if that's public. That's just, it's in Hobo Leaks and it's on Sissy. So that's what everyone's assuming. But oh, I, I think I think, they, I think they mentioned it on Pando's FC chat too. Ah, uh, okay. Fair but enough. I, I was listening to that at work. So that was like half, uh, like half paying attention. So I don't know like 100% like what was said word for words. Just I think they put it up. So. Let's just go with Hobo Leaks. What's in there and what's the net result of that? Is that just more tank? But yeah, oh. it just makes structure tanking. Uh, because like with uh, armor plates and shield extenders becoming uh, more powerful, there's basically no reason to ever structure tank. They're already, it already was like kind of niche anyway. So they're just buffing it to make it like stay somewhat 
relevant, mostly for like solo PvP meme fits, the whole tank megaphrons or whatever. The biggest thing is they did not buff the module. It's a bonus on the battleship hull, so it won't affect cruisers or freighters. Praxis. Well, they left the battleship out, didn't they? Yeah, because uh, the Praxis is the one ship that would be like really frustrating to deal with, at least in terms of small gang. I think it's like one that they complain about a lot because you can fit like a Praxis as a structure tank that has like, MWD, MJD, Grappler, Web, Point, Scram, and Injector. And like people with like a bunch of heavy nudes, and they like, <laughs> like a lot of small gangers complain about the, the Praxis. So I guess that's probably why they did it. Also, it's a special edition ship. Kind of thinking about it, saying like, why would you put a blanket? This works for all races of battleship, including faction, including T2, except this one battleship. But you remind me, it was a, a special edition battleship. It's also got a different role in the game meta in general, doesn't it? It's more like an everything ship. It does everything. Yeah. Uh, not, anything, it, not any one thing really well. Yeah. They at least also give them away. Right. Yeah. They get, they give away for free once a, a year. And also, they're pretty prevalent in the wormholes for two main reasons. First of all, Praxis is like a pretty decent farming ship. Uh, you can farm like a C3 in a Praxis, and it's like pretty cheap for the investment, right? The 300 mil Praxis can make over 100 mil an hour in a C3, even on kind of a bad character. So a lot of wormholers use it for that. And also there's a, as one of the, the yearly giveaways when they do the Eve anniversary, there's a Praxis crate with a skin in it and it only takes four meters cubed. So you can fit load up like 20 of them into an interceptor or you can load up like literally hundreds of them into like blockade runners. And as part of the wormhole meta, because you can just load 20 of them into an interceptor, they're really good for uh, like home defense or for evictions because you can literally get tons of them <laughs> into just an interceptor so it's very easy to bring them in to wormholes can't they also be lodgy they don't have a bonus for it but they have seven high slots they have seven mid seven lows very flexible ship so you definitely can fit lodgy on them i think it's also really good event ships for let's say a guardian scala and for other events as for me it's like a Another version of the Rattlesnake, where you can put, say, missiles and drones, two of the best things for PvE. And the missiles can be really versatile with, like, shield tanks and all, all kinds of stuff like that. And with all those changes to the armor plates and the shield standards, they're all passive tanks and they're all EHP buffs. So it doesn't really change gameplay for, at least for events, where people using the practice for events because they're always rep fit instead of EHP fit. You bring up a good point. We've talked about this on day one. As soon as these changes came out, I was asking uh, experts like Fonsui. He said that one of the concerns was that this is all good for PvP. You get to stay on the field longer. You don't get blown away and out of the fight. So you can stay longer, fight longer, etc. And that's good for PvP. But it makes PvE ridiculous. And then later I found out these changes are mostly for armor tanking and or what do you call it? Buffer tanking. Buffer tanking, Although yeah. I think I think where Fonsway's concerns come in is to the like surgical strike revision because getting like an extra twelve point five percent strength on resistance modules actually is actually way more powerful than what it sounds like on paper because of like how resists work. Effectively, it's going to make like ships tank like thirteen to fourteen percent more. Yes. So uh, it's going to decrease the difficulty of PVE and things like high end abyss because you're just going to tank like, 13, 13 to forty percent more per module or whatever. A lot of these changes seem to be for buffer tanking for PvP, except in the case of the Rattlesnake, uh, which has a really good passive shield. Yeah, I think that's like for solo plays at least. That's one thing. The good thing about passive tanking Rattlesnakes is, at least in high sec, it's hard to suicide gank when you have loads of EHP and loads of regions. At least compared to, let's say, self-wrapping, let's say, shield booster one, it's much easier to gank that one than the extender ones. And yeah. also, <laughs> another one that I really think about that will utilize this buff is like something Ren is doing, Sunshine Incursions, where they're using EHP or buffer tanked Marauders for, for a lot of the contents. And they're using, let's say, just one cycle, their bast Bastion mod and and basically trying to survive that one round and get wrapped from, I think, nesters or other ships. 
as their logis. So maybe Ren can talk about this more when he gets on. Like, I think he's... This is really good for him. There's more survivability for a lot of the battleships that's involved in essential incursions. Yeah, and for Potrin too, people tend to run them in, like, buffer tank paladins and such, so... Or buffer tank nightmares and things. So yeah, it's going to be a, a big buff, especially to battleship PvE. Battleship shield PvE, mostly, but also people who are, like, fitting, like, armor plates and stuff on, on like, paladins. You just reminded me, some very generous player out there who remains uh, anonymous by choice has given us four marauders to give out one for each race. I don't know how to give things out, so we got to figure that out. And then next Sunday, or for our anniversary show, because we're going to do six years pretty soon, we'll give out those. You should do the, the marble giveaways. The what? Use the uh, marble giveaway thing. Oh, where you pick up the the number? Uh, oh no, there's like a game on Steam that you can use called oh. uh, Marble Marbles on on Steam. It automatically like integrates with your Twitch, where people can just type exclamation mark play in your chat, and then they get a marble in the race. And then it's just like a, like RNG, and it looks really cool. And yeah. it's completely free as well; like you don't have to pay anything for it. It's like a completely free thing. Another, I think, uh, I'll figure that out. Buff that it can give to is Black Ops with the high cost of dreads and comparably a much lower cost for the Black Ops. And this buff, maybe you're going to see more like umbrellas using Black Ops instead of just capitals. Let's say armor ones or shield ones. Well, Kenneth, what do you think? Overall, I think a good change because I really love flying battleships. And we haven't in NullSec for years now, basically, because they just get wiped out by bombs and stuff. I'm hoping this helps low sec some too, give them some of their resist back so they can use apostle or, you know, faxes a little bit more and stuff. But I hope it doesn't go back to the way that it was before, where you basically couldn't break them either. So. Hopefully it's a happy medium and everybody will be happy. Yeah, the change that's still in the game that's relevant, right, is the uh, one cap charger per fax thing, cap booster per fax, because that was, like, the biggest cancer thing, because we were unable to break, like, Minakawa's in Volta with like, six Balgons and, like, yeah. 60 Legions that have 700 DPS each. I think right now, at least the one battleship, Doctrines I've seen a lot is the Typhoon one, where armor fitted Typhoons with cruise missiles. But other than that, there aren't that many ones, I would say, in terms of doctrines. Like Typhoon is one, the Rock is one. The Baltic, one is... uh, Goons use Baltic still, yeah, I think. Baltic. The Apoch and Megas with like maybe a splash of like Balgon mixed in there. Maybe not anymore. I think they used to use the Balgons, was just the people who didn't want to fly an Apoch because it wasn't blingy enough. So it looks like people covered their bets and just bought up for a short time all the battleships they could find. Yeah, the uh, the Abaddon in particular is insanely nasty. I've seen uh, like a 700k EHP fit <laughs> with two heat sinks. Abaddon is like from what I've seen. It's like 1400 artillery platform. It's not actually like an energy one, right? It just cannot sustain that much energy cost or capacity cost. Not at all. You need to see the Abyssal World Rattlesnakes of Claymore Links in C6 pulses in wormhole space. And like all kinds of implants. Uh, what's it called? The, uh... Nirvana, yeah. Nirvana, <laughs> yes, yeah. How, how high can this go? Effective hit points? It, it depends on how stupid you want to get, basically. If you want to spend 20 billion isk on a rattlesnake, you can probably get up to 3 million EHP. Oh my god. We're, we're talking like dumb stuff, officer multi spectrums there, and uh, like perfect road LSEs. Off the top of your head, somebody who's determined to be a really good mission runner and has money to burn. Just a general rattlesnake would be good overall. I, obviously, Marauders would be better. I, I think Marauders and Mercurial would be better if you want like clear speed, like you want to make more isk per hour. The Mercurial and Bargast have always been like on the top end of like, the faction battleships, uh, unless we're talking like very specific missions. Marauder now, obviously, because of Bastion, 
But if you want something that's really hard to gank, I think Rattlesnake's probably your best bet there. Even with just a sensible fit with a few the passive Rattlesnake with a few LSCs, you can get a, a, a DPS tank of over 1k, which should be fine for any level 4 mission. On top of that, 400-500k EHP. So it's going to take a lot of tornadoes to kill you. Even even if they like suicide like an eight new Balgon, oh sorry, eight new Apoc or something to like instantly like cap you out, and then they're still gonna need like twenty Taloses to do you, and it, that's just not gonna be profitable from the ganker's perspective. Rattlesnake is not gonna make you the most disc per hour. Marauders and like Mac and Barghest are definitely gonna make you more money per hour. But if you want something that's like the hardest ship, or probably the least likely ship to get ganked, and it's also passive and like semi AFK, then the Rattlesnake's like a great great pick. Yeah, also passive tanks, it doesn't require like, as blinking modules as some of the self revving fits. Like, you don't get like X type extra large shield booster. It's not worth like, a billion by itself. Like, shield extender faction one is like 30, 40 million topped off. If you don't just bling it to the max, it's pretty safe, both in terms of the cost to gank it and the amount of things that you're going to drop. Yeah, if you just go for like uh, Pith C type hardeners or something and. Uh... Maybe uh, like four Republic Fleet Large Shield Extenders and maybe a, a faction drone damage amplifier here or there, right? Like it's still probably going to be under two bill. And it, even if people like get the full drop from your ship, it's not going to replace the ships that they need to kill it. That's high end strategy there for people who are going to be running missions in high sec and, and don't want to get their loot taken away on their way home by gankers. Well, that's good. Rattlesnakes. I think they're already like low over one bill even before yeah. these changes were announced. So I don't, I don't want to check what they are now. They probably can't go much higher. Can go higher. I mean, the build cost for them, right, Kenneth, is still something like 1.8 bill or something. If you like do all of the reactions and stuff yourself to build the BPO, so they're, they're definitely going to go up towards that sort of for, price. At least when I looked uh, at the like, Eve cookbook, on. it was like 1.7, 1.8 billion if you did the reactions oh, yourself my. and stuff. That that seems high to me, but I don't build them anymore. Well, it's even high if you just look at the like blueprint from Jitter, but then you're like buying like already completed products, so you're like it's not realistic. Yeah, but, but it seems like it would like to build them. It's going to cost you like around one point seven bill. At least the last time I checked, I haven't looked at it. I'm looking now, so he'll tell us in a second, but. You would want to get it, if you wanted to buy a new one for yourself, you would either buy it off the market at whatever price, or you could get it off the LP store for less. That's probably the best bet, isn't it? The problem with the battleship is that it's a completed battleship, so you need to uh, move it out. You could get the uh, battleship LP offer, and that's generally pretty good, but then you've got to get it out of uh, Venal or wherever you're buying it from, uh, v Venal LP store. So you'd have to put that rattlesnake in a DST oh. or put it inside a a jump freighter maybe i guess the best solution would probably be to just buy seven of them at once and put them inside a j jump freighter but e even then right you're still paying like 80 mil to get that jump freighter back to jitter again it's not the most safe region nowadays at least for now yeah it's a war zone right now because the pan fam are there and so is fraternity fighting with the boss and a few other like surrounding guys exactly. like us i think a lot yeah. of good fights since not necessarily going ncpl's way either so it's up in the air if if you take your time and use buy orders, you can get them down to about one point uh, four, one point four and a half, somewhere around there. Oh yeah, that's what's just uh, just over where they are now. I see that that one point three bill in Jitter right now. So I'd be careful though, right? Because with gas compression, it's also possible that the it's going to be easier to move gas around, and maybe gas prices will fall. It's yeah, also yeah. possible they might go down as well. Just imagine. Well, rattlesnake become a doctrine ship, and how nasty it will be between like a fleet of rattlesnakes instead of let's say a fleet of Macarios or nightmares, like with the resistance, skill bonus, and all that stuff. Okay, yeah. so we're talking about fleet. Just to give you an idea, if you build a hundred rattlesnakes, you need roughly twelve million cubic meters of mycoserin and cytoserin, that kind of stuff, which don't come from wormholes. They come from other areas. But if you compress that down at 10 to 1, now you are you go from 12 million to 1.2 million. That's, you go from three, you go from what, 
36 jump freighters to three. Yeah, exactly. So it's the logistics there will be a, a massive change. I think that same goes to, let's say, Nightmare Fleets and Macarrier Fleets as well. Those faction yeah, battleships. Correct. Fleets. Yeah, all the faction battleships are the same. It's just the, the what flavor of gas will change. We'll see. Kenneth, guys, anything else you want to talk about on this pre fan fest patch that's coming up? It's not a patch. Is it a series of patches or is it one big patch coming? There's a big one coming after it too. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, there's going to be a there's going to be a couple coming that are fairly. They, size is relative, right? Now the compression one is going to be a large one in size, large one in scope, and effect of an incredibly large portion of the game. The ones coming after it may not change as much stuff, and they may not have as much coding, but they're going to be um, I would imagine fairly well received changes as well. Was it released when the compression is actually going to hit live, or is that still for Fan Fest? I think is all that they've committed to. I'm fairly sure they've said like March, but they haven't said like when in March it's going to be. Fan Fest is when? Is that in in May? Two and a half months. They're going to have everybody coming in in a good mood. It sounds like. I guess it depends. Well, right? <laughs> I don't think you can piss people off much more than they were before. So this is hopefully this is the beginning of the carrot season. This is a pretty good carrot. Mining was a pretty good carrot for some. And then hopefully some of the stuff that's coming behind this is also very much a carrot. We're pretty much tired of the stick. I guess uh, the only thing we haven't talked about is like the crap it can change. Like run underneath. That's a battleship one. Yeah. There's not that big of a change, but like it's basically increasing the output and decreasing the input uh, for people who are going to do it. LP yeah. cost lowered and like more the data sheets can come out. I think those are the NPC buy order things. So CSP Rise mentioned this on Pando's FC chat, which would be like a cool thing to check out maybe. They said that the number of of them being run has like slowly been going up basically but this should like hopefully give like a big incentive i guess we're going to wait to see like how much of the output is going to increase and how low the lp cost is going to be and to see the actual numbers too to see the changes uh, going to affect the game one other thing we were talking about hobo yeah. leaks and one other thing that came across in hobo leaks i don't know how true it is but it looks like the Tatara got a one or one and a half percent increase in in reprocessing yield across the board. So if that actually ends up on TQ, that could be pretty cool as well. Oh, nice. All right. I, I think that's all that we have for the patch. Real quick, there's a big fight that just went down. Shen, you were there. You were a part of it. What happened? So it's over objectives in Ten Riffis. So if you look at it, four systems adjacent to impasse are owned by Jakaris. And the one next door is owned by, I think, Fire. So the reinforcement of those iHubs came out, I think, for me this morning, which is like a few hours ago. And just a big battle happened over that. And that's where we're seeing these numbers, like both sides brought like a good number for it, 800 per site. And we are seeing a huge fight with a lot of ISK lost right there. So it started with like basically two sites looking at each other for an hour and a half, which are staring at each other in the same system. So the system was spiked up to 1800-ish, I think. So it was a big battle, but we started with two sites watching each other until I think we, uh, Goons brought in another fleet for reinforcement, and then we like numbers are even, and then we started fighting. And when the fight started, is again 10% tie dye, it's the kind of thing you expect from now. So it just two sides start. In terms of doctrines, like Serbs, Munings, Eagles, just like standard stuff you would expect from NOSEC, no battleships. 
but there were, I think, a few faxes on grid from uh, the fire side. And overall, all the objectives, at least basically nothing changed. The ones that used to be owned by Jakaris stayed to Jakaris. The one used to be owned by fire stayed to fire. No soft changes after that. That turned into a big fight. I know it was, it took a while. It three hours, two, yeah. Three hour fight, subcapital, constellation wide. That's what we want to see, isn't it? It's mainly stayed in one system. There are just a lot of Intosis ships getting killed everywhere. Uh, that's why you see it includes a wide variety of systems. But the uh, battle happened, I think, mainly in RHO uh, and in the 7 8 R gate, or the other way around. So it's around that gate area there. Yeah, so Pandemic, Horde, Fraternity, helping out Legion of X death. And there's Razor with 33, they're back. And Test, a little bit smaller than they were. This is all on the what you would consider the former Pappy sites. I don't see NCPL here. These guys, NCPL seem to be busy up in Venal. Yeah, Tess came here with a like, retribution fleet. So they, they didn't bring like, a full hack fleet, but they brought like a small assault frigate fleet, basically. On the other side, winning the outcomes is the Imperium there. With Dracaris showing 160, and this is not your time zone. So that is. Uh, this is. This is. It happened what? a few hours ago. That's AUTZ, basically. I think they called the city way before like, the, the battles actually happened. So maybe. All yeah. the samurai staring that happens before a fight. Yeah, just uh -oh. two sides staring at each other. <laughs> it was not a fun thing. Just waiting there. It's tempers and tie no matter what, with so many people in the system. Uh, we just, yeah, we're just waiting and waiting. Nice. All right, looks like my cats are doing PvP on furniture and actually falling off it. So I better go and break them up. Do uh, you guys have anything else you want to talk about before we go? I think Guardian Gala ending like what, one or two days. So. Oh, we'll finish up Guardian. Yeah, get out there. Are you, did you finish doing it or are you just testing it out, Suetonia? Oh, I finished uh, doing it. I've been like streaming it for like the past week. Rewards, the skins and the logging skins are like so similar. I feel like lost a lot of points for people who actually want to get some like ex more exclusive skins. You know, the two look really similar compared to like say last year's, where they had like spirit one and the uh, serpentus ones. Yeah, well, you can they... still get those as drops though. So. But I, I agree though, like the uh, the red force, blue force ones are like a little, uh, they're not like the, uh, the the top tier skins. It's weird how they mirrored it too. So for example, you they're like for the Serpentis ships, you get, I think, blue force for logging into the game. And then you get the red force version of them for completing the reward track. And it's the opposite for the Macarial one, where you get like the Red Force ones for logging in, and then the Blue Force ones in the in the reward track. But uh, they're they're pretty good though, as far as like free skins go. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, gonna, yeah. I'm, I'm never. I'm not going to complain about free skins. I, I think the real treasure of this time period, though, is those Eros blossoms. Again, those are my particular favorites. But those are on sale now, and they go on sale like every two or three years, right? I think they sell them around Valentine's Day, or maybe I'm thinking of the other uh, skin line. Heart Surge is... Yeah, probably. Heart Surge is Valentine's. I, I think they have been associated with the Guardian Scala for a while, but I'm not sure if... Did they not sell them last year? They, I think they sell like every three years, or two years at least, because they get expensive. If you want to make money, buy Eros skins and hold on to them for about a year, and they'll go up to billions. Even one for... Macario will be four billion or something, and they go up to, when you do super capitals. Uh, they go up to eight to twelve billion. I don't know. Yeah. Well, the, right now the hard search skins on sale for the uh, Serpentis line subcaps. Yeah, those are new this year, aren't they? Oh, okay, okay. I, I think so. I'm not entirely sure. I I didn't have them purchased previously. I did. I have all of the ones for the Angel line, but are you a skin collector? Uh, not. Really, I don't go out of my way to buy skins except for the Kestrel, mate. I want to get uh, every skin for the Kestrel. I'm disappointed that CCP hasn't released the Scopes Indication Kestrel yet. Like, CCP Swift's gonna troll me and 
that's going to be like the one for November. So I have to wait the whole year until, until I get that skin. You should have a Suetonia skin because for some reason, skins, if skins are named after players or designed for players, that doesn't bother me at all. Whereas if a module is named after a player, that really irritates me for some reason. So it would be really to... cool if they did the competition or something where the winner gets to, like some design input on the skin or something. For the Proving Grounds, there's that guy called Jaroska Fawn who's like always at the top because he like plays it like 24-7 and he's also like really skilled and like tryhards it a lot. It would be cool if, like, I don't know, if he won, like if he makes a Fawn skin and it's like a green and like vine kind of themed skin or something, you know, something like that would be really cool. That way it's not like directly naming the player, but you can like infer it. Yeah, that's how they do it. That's how they named the drone regions. That was named after alliances that won competition. The Savwans or the Entosis, uh, also named after groups, but not directly after them. But yeah, the, uh, the Entosis links, when they, I think they had that on a test server. I'm not sure if it was Sissy or if it was yeah, a specific it was, server. It was Duality. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I think the four people who like it, took part in it the most or took the most nodes or held the most or something yeah uh, they all got their own like entosis links i think that there was like there's a like a nora one there's an affirmative one a spectre fleet one and a pandemic legion one i think they fought in providence whoever could control providence i think was the competitive region yep and and the four top sov holders by the end of it yeah i think players submitted names to them and then seems to be like maybe adjusted them a little bit because some of the ones that the players submitted were like really cringy <laughs> if i remember quickly yeah i mean do you uh, have, like modules or drones actually i remember it's like the dunk salvage one the faction salvage drones yeah that's after named after dunk i don't know I, I, was, I wasn't upset at that one because of what suetonia said it would be yeah, the uh, you can do the bad mana thing, right? Where you you t- you put one dunk drone inside your ship, and then when you kill someone, you then just like constantly scoop and unscoop your dunk drone to tell them that you've dunked them. It's like good bad mana strategy. Yeah, maybe they'll have the Kenneth Feld gas mining drone after I am no longer CSM. It can only be used on Feldspar, though. It's always full of hot air. If it have a giant beard, <laughs> just yeah. Never seen a module with a beard, except that Feldspar one. You guys have good names for like having a module named after you, though, right? Because you could just have like a Feld module, and it would be fitting and natural. A Dunk module is like I just have like some weird, I don't know, like bizarre name that I made. I just put. I, I normally played with a name called Suit, but then I put Onya on the end to make it like a female character, and so like, it doesn't make any sense to have that as like a, a module. So your real name is Suit? I didn't know that. No. Not your real name, but your actual yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. That's why my, my old's called Sutalis. Sutalis? Oh, wow. Learn something today after all that. Anything else you guys wanted to talk about? Or are we done? Oh, there's some new MPE stuff on. I'm not sure if it's actually on Sissy and playable, but oh, that's coming. That's interesting, I guess. They're redoing like the mining. Uh, career agent being an officer in the game would actually be really cool you right? have estimal farchon or whatever and she spawns in Vino and like negative 0.75 systems and below if you like that'd be like a really cool nod to like maybe like a really famous player who passed away or something you have them like in the game as an officer at or can name one after you and be like a Castro, like Grista one. Oh, that would be Vino. pretty easy to kill though he's still gonna be an officer so it's, there's gotta be some difficulties in there Easier yeah, we, we need uh, we need officer frigate modules in the game, man. We need to, where's my Estimals uh, rocket launcher? Or those five element prom mods. All right. Thanks, Kenneth. So funny you ordered New York pizza in Chicago. Suetonia and Nick. Shen, thank you guys all for coming around. Always a pleasure talking with you guys. If you want to hang out with Talking in Stations, we have a Discord. So come hang out there. There's some channels for help, channels for information. These guys answer questions there as well. And you can also catch us on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, we also have a podcast. Now, here is an announcement. Uh, Our podcast got changed, so it's now called EVE Online colon Talking in Stations. The title change made the link to our uh, current stuff break from the old one. So 
you'll want to resubscribe to the podcast, Eve Online, colon, Talking in Stations. All right, guys, thanks a lot for hanging out with us. We will see you next time on Talking in Stations.